Good morning. So when I get done, you'll all be wearing Birkenstocks and eating granola. I, I'm quite convinced that you'll all be really hippies when we get done. Everybody can hear me? Okay. So uh, could somebody do the lights? Because the slides are a lot prettier than I am. Um, <clears throat> Dave Porter is a recovering mortgage banker. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was a school teacher. I lasted um, uh, several, several hours and um, went into real estate, became uh, a real estate agent, became a, an associate broker, became a broker, and then became a broke broker. Um, then strategically went into mortgage banking in 1982, when interest rates were at 17 and a half and three discount points, uh, it was a special time. Special time. Um, so I've done quite a bit in the education space, but uh, for real estate and for builders, for lenders, and for appraisers, and um, uh, ended up in Alaska and. Um, I, I, I spun it as a promotion to my wife, but it was still Alaska in the dead of winter with a six-month-old baby. And um, up in Alaska, they build homes very energy efficient because it's, um, uh, there's a French word, damn cold. And um, so the bottom line was um, I got very involved in financing these energy efficient homes. And it was before green was popular or anything like that. And then um, I didn't want to pay a whole bunch of money for my garbage, so I was just out of cheap, being cheap. I decided that we'd start to recycle, and my kids were coming home from school saying, you know, we can do other things with that. And I go, that beer can is just fine right there. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the case for going green. We're going to talk a little bit about greening your business buildings. We're going to talk about greening your business, and we're going to talk about greening your homes, and we're going to talk about greening your lives. And I'm going to do all that in a short window of time, because time is not a renewable resource. Okay. So um, it's where economy and ecology meet. It's at that intersection. And there's this thing called the green wave, and it is, it is happening. And if you're not aware of it, um, then I might encourage you to just, you know, check out the, the newspapers, the magazines, because you almost can't pick up anything without hearing something about green. There's only one slight little problem, and that is we don't know what the heck green is. There's a thousand different definitions. If you ask an architect, you're going to get a different answer than if you ask someone who is a uh, um, you know, let's say um, a school or maybe uh, an insurance company or it's, there's a, lots of different definitions. So we're going to go through some of that. There's an, um, this is the trifecta, as my wife um, d calls it, the environmental effect, the consumer effect, the business effect. And real quickly, we're going to go, go through that. But again, there is no clear definition of green and that becomes part of the problem. All right, so at the core, it's energy and water efficiency. It's materials use, and if you think building green is putting green recycled glass tile in your home, then you're a little bit right, but it's more about the envelope, it's more about the size of the building, the orientation. Um, renewable energy. A lot of people say, oh, I want to put in solar panels, you know? And it's kind of like, whoa, you need to have your you need to have your energy conservation vegetables before you can have your renewable desserts. There's people putting solar panels on their buildings and their buildings are bleeding energy. They need to have retrofit. And then there's this thing called um, insulation. Uh, okay. um, by the way, there's 128 million homes in the United States. 95 million of them need some sort of energy retrofit. The average age is 35 years old, and, and insulation wasn't even required in code until the mid-70s. So there's a lot of homes out there that could use a little help. 
All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about packaging. Packaging is absolutely evil. Start to look at the packaging. Um, I bought a, I lost my earphone for when you're driving, you know, the little earpiece, the Bluetooth thing. It came in a package that was inside a package that was inside a package. No lie. It was kind of like, oh my gosh. All right. Just packaging is evil. Um, and by the way, it's, it's plastic. There's a lot of plastic there. All right. So change your light bulbs. There's LED lights over there display. They just got a commercial. Um, you need to check those out. All right. Um, greening your business. Um, okay. So let's if you don't believe in green or just kind of like not sure about it and you throw your McDonald's wrapper out of your Hummer, you know, you know, you know, you may want to go green just because of this, because it's a hundred and forty billion dollar opportunity in the next couple years. This is huge money. There are huge corporations saying we are betting on this. We want to be part of this. And if you're not part of it, then guess what? You're not going to capture some of the business. And people are looking for this. Consumers are asking for it. All right. So it's economic. It needs to make economic sense. So, you know, I'm not telling every one of you to go out and put solar and put a wind turbine. And uh, by the way, they have geothermal here. Geothermal is great. There's an initial cost. It's pretty high. But afterwards, it's pretty awesome. But, you know, you, I'm, not, I'm just talking about the basics here. All right. So you better be, you know, at the table or you're going to be on the menu. So this is a proactive stance about your business. Uh, and by the way, I'll get this PowerPoint deck to Rick. If anybody's interested in seeing it, we can, we can provide that for you. Um, and this even says that U.S. diners are looking for greener restaurants and healthier fare. Um, I guess the supersize your life thing is uh, not working out. And people are spending more money on green products. Even with this economy, we're seeing people doing things like buying uh, cleaning products and things like that that are less harmful to the environment and to their families. Your competitions are doing it. So if you say, nah, yeah, forget it, you know, just a hippie, you know, that's talking, you know, you might rethink that because the competitions are building their business plans. They're saying, what is their message? How are they going to brand it? What are the low hanging fruit? There are things that you can do right now that is classified as green that saves you money. That's called duh. That's called duh. I'm going to save money and I get to brand myself as I'm doing something right. Yeah, do that. So. And guess what? The law. The law is coming to town. Um, remember this cute little company called Enron? Okay. And there was a little thing that came out of that. There was a law that called Sorbanes-Oxley. Some of you know about that. It basically says that if the CEO or senior officers of a company know something of a, a defect of that company and they do not disclose it to stockholders, then they are liable that they should have told the company about that. Like, we don't have any money, or we're betting on other people's money, or we don't have a product, little things like that. But there is a lot of ties lately that saying that Sorbanes-Oxley has ramifications about the environment. So if you're spilling something into the rivers, or if you're doing something that has high amounts of energy or high amounts of water usage, you know, there could be a factor there. And then the next one there says water index. So um, it's, um, I want to get this, um, Bear Stern is coming out with a water index. And they're saying, is that company viable? Do they have access to water that they need? You know, and by the way, we look at, you know, beautiful lake and we got plenty of water. Well, guess what? Our population is going to double by 2050 and water is finite. There's only a certain amount of water that we have. You know, we're moving around deck chairs on the Titanic. I know this is supposed to be upbeat, but I'm telling you, we need to start rethinking our water. Um, so let's carry the one here. So we're using potable drinking water to flush our toilets. Holy crap. 
it doesn't make any sense at all that we would use potable water, drinking water, you know, 3% of the water on this planet is potable. The rest is seawater. 2% of the three is frozen. Yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, put it in the toilets. <laughs> oh, but my dog drinks out of the toilet. Okay, we'll buy your dog a little bowl, and it'll say dog water bowl. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're still working on my meds. Um, uh, Federal Trade Commission is coming out and saying we're going to start to monitor companies that say uh, greenwashing. Oh, this product is organic. Um, how about, um, uh, there's an example here, um, green cigarettes. They call that pot, by the way. Um, you know, there was one company that said um, our plastic bags are biodegradable. It would be inappropriate and not professional to say the name GLAD. And, and GLAD had these plastic bags, and they said biodegradable. And in the sun, those bags biodegrade. Absolutely right. But when you're in 12 feet of trash on top of it, you got yourself a plastic bag that's going to last a 1,000 years. Bravo. So here, there, that's an example of greenwash, and that is some of the stuff that the FTC is beginning to look at. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about your buildings. Your buildings are big. They're big business, they're big money, and they're big consumers of uh, resources, both initially and ongoing. 76% of the energy produced by coal plants go into buildings, 72% of electricity consumptions, 39% of energy, CO2 emissions, 40% of raw materials used is with buildings, and 14% of potable waters. Buildings have a major impact, and guess what? They can have a major positive impact if we do just a few things. And there's a few things you can do to your existing buildings, and if you're not going to, uh, I mean, if you're going to be looking at building a building, then look at some of these certifications like LEED, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. There's some amazing programs. That's a good commercial program that's worth knowing about. They also have a home program, all right? It's about reducing energy. You know, in 1940, the average house was 1,100 square feet, and the family size was 3.67 people. By 2008, we're at 2,800 square feet with 2.6 people. So our homes are getting bigger, our families are getting smaller. It's just not making a lot of sense. So it's about reducing the energy, it's about energy reduction being part of design. Natural light. There is proof that, and I used the example of a LEED certified building, that these buildings are less cost to operate. Eight to nine percent decrease in operating cost. 7.5 percent increase in the building's value. The ROI, 6.6 percent in the value, and they're getting faster rents for more dollars. They have less vacancy on these buildings. People want to be in these buildings, and why? Because the employees are performing better. There's proof that schools that are LEED certified, students are performing better. Their test scores are better. There's proof that employees are showing up, there's less job absenteeism and better productivity. And it's stuff like natural light and ventilation. Just some really basic things. By the way, you know, carpets and, and formaldehyde in the cabinets and the stuff that we breathe. You know that new home smell? Not so good. Employee productivity as much as 15%. This absolutely blew my mind that there's this huge connection between water and energy and energy and water. They actually are almost one and the same. Um, in most power plant, water cools um, the steam and spins the elect uh, electricity generation turbines. A plasma TV for one hour consumes three quarts of water. Um, no, I'm sorry, it takes one quart of water to run your plasma TV. 
um, an energy efficient light bulb, 20 of them, a gallon of water, 20 um, uh, LED light bulbs, a fraction, a quart of water. We don't think about energy as water, but we have this precious water and so we need to start thinking about it. Um, you know, when restaurants ask you for water and you say, oh, of course I want water. Well, guess what? It takes two glasses of water to wash the glass, to fill it up, to give it to you for you not to drink the water. So if they ask you if you want water, it's really a good thing, you know? Uh, you know, my family, we decide we drink wine. We save water, too precious. <laughs> so there's some great incentives. Um, make sure you go over and see Charmin um, at the Avista booth, commercial and residential rebates. And this is a great web page called dsireusa.org. Do not go to desire.com. <laughs> it's desire. It's a database um, that you should be aware of. There's other programs out there too. I mean, I do some consulting work for this group and what they do is they'll come in and they'll take your warehouse or your office building or whatever and they'll put in different light bulbs and different heating systems and then they will help you get the 179D tax initiatives. So we have a couple years to get major tax credits, and these are actually paying for themselves. It's absolutely huge. So the cost of the improvement, you're immediately saving on the cost of what you would pay for your energy, but then you're getting this bonus of the tax incentives. So take advantage of them while they're here. You know, green could be green. All right. Turn off the equipment, you know, I, Anna and I were driving through Bellevue the other night, it was around 10.30, and I said, what a country, we're very productive, look at all the people in their offices. <laughs> Why are we leaving these lights on? I, I don't, I don't get it. Turn your lights off. Um, get an LED light bulb, light emitting diode, do not use an incandescent light bulb. 90% of the energy that goes into the regular light bulb is heat. 10% goes to light the light. There are people turning on their air conditioner because their home is being heated by light bulbs. Duh. Okay, I'm still here. Okay. So, Weatherize the program, Energy Star Appliance, no-brainer. Um, yeah, I mean, think about paperless if you can. Um, rethink your printing. Um, uh, one of the new um, members of the chamber today, uh, eco-friendly printing. So just think about what you need to print and uh, replace older toilets. 25% of our water use in our homes are toilets. 25%. Apparently, I'm hung up on the toilet thing today. All right, all, right. all right. Here's a restaurant that we like to frequent. And what they do, pig farmers uh, pick up the gallons of waste, meat scraps, vegetable scraps, um, go home for compost. Um, there's a company that comes in and gets the fryer oil for biodiesel. And this is a company, two ladies bought this business a year ago, and they've actually turned it all around. I think it's absolutely marvelous. Um, and here's some sad statistics. About half the food in the United States is wasted, uh, while 35 million Americans um, are, do not have a reliable food source. Um, um, U.S. has four times the amount of food that it needs. Half the food currently being thrown away could feed the, million, the one billion people malnutrition, malnutrition malnourished people of the world. So, just a lot of opportunities. So, you don't want to go on vacation here. You don't want one of these eco-tours here. This is, a, you know, what is throw, I'm just going to throw that away. What's a way? Where is a way? Where is a way? We are on this planet together. What we, that, what we put into the air is the air that we breathe. 
What we put into the water is the water that we drink. What we put into the soil plants, you know, grows the food that we eat. I mean, we're connected to this thing, you know. By the way, I don't know if you've heard of something called the Pacific Gyre. It's twice the size of Texas, and it's an island of trash. Plastic bottles, plastic everything, and it's out there. And it's twice the size. A lot of garbage goes there. All right. So enjoy your hike. So greening your business, green wash fatigues, you know. That, there's some vague stuff out there about green and green washing. You need to define it for yourself. There's some tenants that are really common. You know, the, the four R's, absolutely. Recycle, reuse, reduce. Um, and, and just kind of rethink what you're doing and, and be sincere about it. Think about the ramifications. I really don't have the time to go through this, but there is a process, there are steps. I did want to talk a little bit about that web page and again, visit the booth. There's some great incentives. Take advantage of the incentives that are here. Make money, save money, save the world, be a good person. Okay. Oh, by the way, people always say, okay, what about the weird CFL light bulbs? What about the mercury? Yes, there is mercury. If one of them breaks, do not go down and breathe in. But you're probably in your tooth, there's probably more mercury or in the kids' tennis shoes bouncing around. There's probably more mercury in those than in a light bulb. And if you want to look at what it looks like, there it is. So go ahead and get the regular light bulb. The incandescent is the blue line. That's how much um, uh, mercury that comes out of the coal plant to feed your regular light bulb. So if you want to look at the, uh, the CFL, go with the CFL, or better yet, the LED, if you can afford them. There's that water thing and the toilets, and then behavior. Guys, you know, you're, sh you're, you're, sh you're shaving, so, you know, you turn on the water. Ladies, you're washing your teeth. Just make sure you turn on the water full blast while you brush your teeth. I think all you need to do is just get it wet, turn it off, and do that. I do something called sailor showers. We don't want to get into visuals here, but <laughs> I can tell you it does involve getting wet, lathering up, turning off the water, I mean, um, getting wet, turning off the water, and then uh, rinsing off, turning the water back on, saving water. Uh, that's the first dual flush toilet. <laughs> I talked to somebody who said, that. I had, a, I had a friend said, I want more toilets in my house. I go, why? He goes, I'm making money on it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, my local uh, utility gave me $100 uh, if I put in a dual flush toilet and I could get them for $89. Um, and so there's some great deals on dual flush toilets. Why, I know, and I'm being careful on time here, um, uh, but um, why green customer motivation, children's future, increasing um, pro energy prices, reliance on foreign oil. Um, T. Boone Pickens say that, you know, we are importing 70% of our oil, we're exporting our national net worth. If, if, you want to, if you want to protect our country, red, white, blue, and green, let me tell you, because we are so dependent on this foreign stuff. And if, if we want to have that independence, we need to rethink this thing. All right. So this is your house payment. I'll be talking to a group of realtors later today. This is your house payment. This is the way we look at our houses right now. It's your house payment. Principal, interest, taxes, insurance. The elephant in the room is the utilities. We spend more money on utilities than we do on taxes or insurance and yet lenders don't qualify buyers about it. Very, very pleased to see a lender here, Wells Fargo's over there. They're talking about energy efficient mortgages. You should know about them. Has anybody here ever been offered an energy efficient mortgage when you went to buy or refinance? Not one damn hand. This program has been around for 20 years. And you can add energy improvements to your mortgage, whether it's a refinance or a purchase, and people are just not being offered them. 
All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, there's green money. By the way, there's no such thing as a green mortgage, but there's a lot of talk about it. You can add the energy savings to your mortgage. You can appraise homes in a green way. Appraisers need to get it. One of the things our company does is we train lenders and appraisers about what green is. I want to change Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Just a little goal. <laughs> but by the way, I'm getting some traction. I think we need to look at the way we look at buyers totally different. It can't be about PITI, principal interest taxes insurance. It has to be about the utility cost. And I want the appraisal form changed. I want it to document that. And I want the multiple listing forms to be there so people can search for it. I asked a builder in Montana, can you build a green home? He said, any color you want. <laughs> Find out about the 203K. There's a booth over also here about the 203K. Probably the best loan program to take your home and put in energy efficient features as well as put in features that are green, like um, carpet that doesn't have formaldehyde or um, toxins, or no carpet at all, do something else. VA has a great program, Fannie Mae has a great program. The MLS, they have a whole system. Um, is your MLS, does it have green components? Checklist? All right, so there's a homework assignment. GreenTheMLS.org, you gotta do it, you gotta do this. We can prove that these homes are selling faster and for more dollars per square foot in multiple markets, but we just have to track it. People want green, they're buying the products, they want the ones that perform well. Um, Rick mentioned, um, we, def we learned the term um, um, upside down, uh, where uh, you owe more money on the house than you owe. Um, also, cost overruns. We heard, learned that, but we built a green home. You're welcome to go check it out online. Going green at the beach, we've had about um, oh, 32,000 unique visitors to the webpage, about 3,100 people walk the home, and it's, um, it, it's pretty cool. It's over um, north of Seattle area, a little place called Warm Beach, okay? PG to C ratio, this was inspired by a bottle of Merlot. Uh, it was a good bottle, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then later I had breakfast, but it was, <laughs> it's a good message, PG to C ratio. There needs to be enough pain or enough gain to affect the change. And maybe you're not seeing the pain right now, or you're not seeing the gain, but I'm hoping I'm letting you know that there's a huge business case. There's a way to save money. But when, you know, gas is now there at $4 a gallon. And the last time it got to $4 a gallon, people started to change their behavior. They started looking at other cars. They started to tell their neighbors, I'm headed into town. Do you need anything? Started to rethink it. We need to start to rethink it. PG to C ratio, pain to gain to affect the change. There's some things that you can do. You got to walk it yourself. There's easy stuff. Recycling, reduce, reuse, change out your light bulbs. Think about your, your water usage. Um, and then there's other stuff like getting your home retrofitted, but you need to do that. I am running out of time. And living green doesn't mean giving up living. Uh, but think about your products. Are they local? You know, are you, are you, that's, by the way, green. Sustainable is green. Durable is green. You know, why put on two comp roofs when you could put on one roof that lasts 50 years? Yeah. By the way, there's a great subdivision, and I hope that you'll go see it. Uh, Dennis is here. There's a few people. Um, uh, it's not too far away. Um, where are you, Dennis? What's, wh what's the name of the project? Meadow Ranch. Meadow Ranch. They have a little uh, booth over here. I just did a commercial for them. Get over it. It's really good. It's not the strongest of the species that will survive, but the most intelligent that will survive. Um, Henry David Thoreau had a great quote about 1850. He said, what's the use of having a fine house if you don't have a tolerable planet to put it on? Education is the key. I hope 
that you'll ask yourself this question. What are a couple things that I heard this morning about recycling or light bulbs or water use or local packaging or buying in bulk instead of all the packaging or rethinking what you're doing or asking your customers what they would like to see? You know, think about your building. Go online and Google search greening business and you'll find tons of different opportunities. Thanks.